Chair now recognizes himself for an opening statement. Today we continue the Select Committee's work at looking into the government's efforts with big tech to censor speech. First it was Twitter. When Elon Musk took over the company, he called it a crime scene and released information through Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, two journalists who we've had in front of this committee a couple times, showing that the government was deeply involved in the content moderation decisions at Twitter. Then it was Facebook, where folks from the White House, Andy Slavitt, Rob Flaherty, were telling the company to take down posts that they disagreed with. The White House pressured Facebook to censor true information and even told them to take down a meme. Then it was YouTube. Biden White House said, why aren't you guys at YouTube taking down more, quote, borderline content, which is content, speech, that doesn't violate YouTube's policies. Just content and speech that they didn't like, didn't agree with their narrative. Both Facebook and YouTube caved to the White House pressure because they knew they had to keep good relationships with the White House for important policy decisions. We call that coercion. Then we learned how they all teamed up, big government, big tech, big academia, working together to censor Americans in the lead up to the 2020 election through the Election Integrity Partnership and the Virality Project. This partnership created at the request of the federal government sent thousands of links directly to big tech to be censored. True information was targeted. Jokes weren't safe either. Even members of this committee were targeted. Congressman Massey, we've discussed that throughout this Congress in several different hearings. And it wasn't just conservatives. It was mostly conservatives, but it wasn't just conservatives. And yesterday we shared what we've uncovered about the White House pressuring Amazon. Internal Amazon emails are unbelievable. It says, if the, is the, think about this one. Is the administration asking us, we put this out in a Twitter thread yesterday, is the administration asking us, Amazon, asking us to remove books, or are they more concerned about search results or both? Stop and think about it. Government pressuring Amazon to ban books. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all this big combination impact election, and now we find the same thing was ha happening, the same dynamic was happening at Amazon. Today's hearing, how the government is trying to take censorship to the next level by weaponizing artificial intelligence tools to limit speech in real time and at scale. In the name of combating alleged misinformation regarding COVID-19 in the 2020 election, the National Science Foundation has been issuing multi-million dollar grants to universities and nonprofit research teams to develop artificial intelligence powered censorship and propaganda tools. These tools can be used by government and big tech to shape public opinion by restricting certain viewpoints and promoting others. In notes from the University of Michigan's first presentation to the National Science Foundation about its NSF funded AI powered called WiseDex tool, they said this quote. So this is when the University of Michigan is making their pitch to the government to get taxpayer money they said, our misinformation service helps policymakers at platforms who want to push responsibility for difficult judgment to someone outside the company by externalizing the difficult responsibility of censorship. Think about that last phrase, by externalizing the difficult responsibility of censorship. They said right up front what they want to do. They want taxpayer money coming to them so they can develop tools with AI to censor American speech. I don't know if it gets much scarier than that. Non-public documents obtained by the Select Committee reveal the disinformation researchers referring to their work as, quote, censorship in the slides they presented to the National Science Foundation. The National Science Foundation tracked reporting critical of its program, including an article written by Mr. Uh, Professor Jonathan Turley and by Ms. Richardson, one of our witnesses today. And they developed a specific media strategy they considered blacklisting, and they considered blacklisting conservative media. In one project proposal, document to the National Science Foundation, the researchers explained the need for a, quote, proactive suite of human technologies to assist rural and indigenous communities, military veterans, older adults, and military families, all of whom the researchers claimed were unusually susceptible to misinformation campaigns online. I want you to digest that for a second. If you're an older American, you served in our military, and you live out and fly over country, you're too stupid to know what's true. 
And these guys wanted their tax money, our tax money, the very people they described, they took their tax money to develop tools to censor the people that they took the tax money from. Another project proposal sent to the National Science Foundation demeans Americans who hold, quote, the Bible and the Constitution as sacred and choose to review primary sources rather than rely on expert consensus. You think the Bible's sacred, you support the Constitution, and you review primary sources to think for yourself, you're the problem, according to the National Science Foundation, and they're gonna give your tax dollars to entities developing software, developing this technology, this tool, to censor your speech. One other proposal document said this, reactive content moderation is too slow and ineffective. And that's what this hearing's about. AI, which can censor in real time and at scale, should scare us all. The pattern we've seen emerging is deeply troubling, but for the work of this committee, we'd have never known about all the censorship going on. And now we're concerned, obviously, about how artificial intelligence can interact, can use these tools uh, develop these tools to censor and restrict American speech. I want to thank our witnesses for being here today, and with that, I would yield to the ranking member for an opening statement.